your head down. In Aiken, South Carolina, security guards trained to protect the highly sensitive Savannah River nuclear weapons Please. plant from terrorist attack. Critics say this counter-terrorist training is a long-overdue move towards safeguarding U.S. atomic weapons plants from sabotage, theft, and even the possibility of a nuclear explosion. For years, from within the Energy Department, security specialist John Hanatio has been waging his own battle to protect nuclear weapons plants against what he describes as his own department's complacent refusal to face up to the threat of nuclear terrorism. It was sort of an attitude of, it's never happened before and it can't happen here type of approach to, to the way business was done. In 1979 and 80, Hanatio received awards and commendations for identifying gaps in security at nuclear weapons plants in Savannah River, Los Alamos, New Mexico, and Oak Ridge, Tennessee. But when Hanatio continued to find fault, he was shifted to a desk job where he was no longer permitted to go out to the plants and look for problems. They call this uh, being put on the back burner, and I think I was put on the back burner. Deskbound, Hanatio gained a reputation among members of Congress for telling tough truths his bosses preferred not to mention. Congressman Albert Gore is a member of the House Energy Committee. The information that, that we have gotten from John Hanatio has been right on target. And in fact, he's one of the only people in that whole uh, part of the uh, uh, Energy Department who's been willing to give us the straight facts instead of just giving us a, a doctored-up version that looks like they're doing their job. Committee documents cite cases where Hanatio has been embarrassingly right. In 1981, Hanatio warned his bosses not to send a report to President Reagan that downplayed vulnerabilities at atomic weapons plants. A few months later, the General Accounting Office criticized that report as misleading. In 1982, Hanatio warned his superior not to sign off on a report describing Savannah River safeguards as effective. Within a year, Savannah River had flunked a series of security tests. I felt it was important to, to tell the truth, and that's what, would, what guided me. This past summer, Hanatio's bosses warned him that he was in danger of losing his security clearance. I was shocked, really. Uh, I was scared. Without a security clearance in my area of work, you can lose your job. The charge? Hanatio was accused of mishandling a classified document during a briefing with Republican congressional staffer Jim Christie. Well, I was appalled, quite frankly, because uh, at all times uh, John Hanatio had acted professionally and conscientiously. Christie says he would have told Energy Department officials that Hanatio was innocent, but he wasn't asked. He says Hanatio didn't show him the classified document at the briefing because Hanatio hadn't written it yet. In that document, which was submitted for proper security clearance, Hanatio summarized the extremely critical remarks he'd made about his bosses. He received his reprimand six weeks later, just hours before he was scheduled to tell another congressional aide about security foul-ups at nuclear weapons plants. It certainly seems like more than a coincidence for him to be called in and intimidated the very day that he was scheduled to go brief a second to committee. No one responsible for reprimanding John Hanatio would speak to CNN. A panel of Hanatio's bosses were called before a House Energy Oversight Subcommittee last month, but they were unable to justify the charge against Hanatio or to explain why they broke their own rules when they investigated that charge. Congressman John Dingell became irate. Well, what, what, what do you do when you find out whether proper, proper security procedures are followed? At that is stage, that followed by an investigation it or is be, that followed by a maypole dance? Now, it, which occurs? It would be followed, if appropriate, it would be followed by an investigation, which then gets into the technical details and step-by-step, -step legalistic kinds of things you're right. talking about. And, and that, and, and, and... we never got that far. Well, it got far enough that Mr. Hanatio got a reprimand. I think that for quite some time, these people were uh, irritated that uh, John Hanatio was consistently pointing out their shortcomings and was consistently being proven right. Uh, so they pretended that there was some kind of breach of national security. This was just an excuse. The Energy Department's own Inspector General concluded that Hanatio had been treated unfairly. The reprimand was removed from Hanatio's file and destroyed. Hanatio even received a written apology. 
That isn't the end of it. CNN has learned that Congressman John Dingell plans to ask the Justice Department to investigate the harassment of John Hinatio. It's a federal crime punishable by five years in prison to intimidate anyone who gives information to Congress. Meanwhile, John Hinatio says he's learned a lesson. If you're going to, to tell the truth uh, against people who, who don't want to, to deal with it, the only advice I, c I can say is be prepared. Uh, be prepared for anything. Sheila Herschel, CNN, on special assignment. Lebanon, a truck crammed with explosives crashes into a marine barracks, killing 239. This terrorist act serves as a graphic reminder of the need for security in a world where a suicidal fanatic can trigger a mass murder. Four days after the massacre in Beirut, Congressman John Dingell, chairman of the House Energy Committee, sent a letter to Energy Secretary Donald Hodel urging him to strengthen security at nuclear weapons plants scattered across this country. Jingle pointed to the security breakdown in Lebanon and warned that a successful terrorist assault against a U.S. nuclear weapons plant could end in a nuclear explosion on American soil. The Michigan Democrats cited several security breaches at weapons plants, such as sensors and alarms that don't work, guards who cannot shoot, a guard force that responded to a mock attack 16 minutes after the attackers left with the plutonium, another guard force that fired on one another during a mock assault, and a disgruntled former employee who drove past guards at a uranium fuel plant and then threatened to blow the place up. Dingle wrote that at one nuclear weapons plant, the guard force has less than six chances in a thousand of interrupting a terrorist attack. In fact, at the Y-12 weapons plant in Oak Ridge, Tennessee, which holds vast quantities of bomb-grade uranium, a Japanese camera crew actually flew a helicopter directly over these highly sensitive buildings. The airspace over most U.S. nuclear weapons plants is unrestricted. Another problem erupted at Y-12 in mid-November when the Guard Force went out on strike. CNN has learned that Dingle wrote President Reagan on November 22nd, urging him to stop the Y-12 strike and start using the military to help protect plants vital to national defense. Dingle blames these five men for what he calls severe vulnerabilities at our most critical weapons facilities. They are Herman Roser, the Assistant Energy Secretary for Defense Programs, Troy Wade, Roser's former deputy, James Culpepper, Deputy Assistant Secretary for Security Affairs, Ralph Cottle, Director of Safeguards and Security, and Robert Morgan, former manager of the Savannah River Weapons Plant. After criticizing security at nuclear weapons plants for more than a year, Dingle recently learned that these five key officials had received $132,200 in cash awards and bonuses. They received much of this money under a 1978 law that allows top federal executives to collect up to 20% more than their salaries for work judged to be exceptional. Herman Roser, for example, earned $67,200 this year in base pay, but he was given an additional $10,080 bonus after he resigned from the Energy Department in the wake of congressional criticism. He also received an $11,115 bonus in 1982, $5,802 in 1981, and a $10,000 presidential award in 1980. The grand total? $36,997. Troy Wade received bonuses and awards totaling $32,713. James Culpepper received bonuses and awards amounting to $21,112. Robert Morgan received bonuses and awards that came to $26,435. And Ralph Caudle received bonuses and awards adding up to $14,943. Who chose these men for these honors? Well, James Culpepper nominated Ralph Caudle for a 1982 award with Herman Roser's endorsement. Roser even persuaded the personnel board to double the amount. Just a few months ago, Troy Wade recommended Culpepper for a 15% bonus. Roser concurred and then recommended Wade for a 20% bonus. I think the money should be refunded. I think the, uh, those uh, certificates uh, recognizing outstanding work, the silver medals, the gold medals, 
should be uh, uh, returned and... Congressman Jerry Sikorsky is a member of the House Energy Committee. In a letter published in the Congressional Record, Sikorsky's committee chairman, John Dingell, says that Roser, Caudill, and Morgan misled the committee about safeguards at nuclear weapons plants. Sikorsky uses stronger language. The uh, term misleading um, is uh, probably too neutral. Um, they, in, in fact, uh, lied. Congressman Dingell wrote the Energy Secretary protesting the awards as flagrant cronyism and the most outrageous example of the buddy bonus system I have seen to date. The Energy Department responded by declaring Dingell's letter a threat to national security. They came over with a little classification stamps, but uh, were told that the letter had already been uh, put in the congressional record. And uh, uh, they would have classified every part of that letter except a couple paragraphs. An Energy Department spokesman told us that the Energy Secretary didn't want to talk to us about Dingle's letter. Roser, Wade, Morgan, Culpepper, and Caudill never returned our phone calls. We asked to speak to Caudill and Culpepper at their offices in Germantown, Maryland. We were told they weren't there. We went to Culpepper's house. I'm going to talk to you for a couple of minutes now. I'm busy, very tied up, so I couldn't get to it. I was wondering if you would answer a few questions about the awards that you received. I'm getting away for breakfast right now, I'm sorry. Congressman John Dingle says you don't deserve the rewards. As a matter of fact, uh, Congressman Sikorsky he says you should give them back. It's also been suggested that the state of security at nuclear plants are a shambles and that American lives are in danger. When we went to Herman Roser's house, his wife said he'd been trying to contact us. She told us to wait while she spoke to her husband on the telephone. While we were waiting, a police car drove up. The officer said Mrs. Roser had phoned in a complaint. The county police also sent an officer. After the police determined that there wasn't a crime in progress, we went to Rose's office and tried to talk to him there. We're downstairs now, taking pictures of your guard putting a hat over our camera to illustrate that nobody at the Department of Energy is responsive to the request from a certified news organization. Roser never came down to talk to us. Instead, Energy Department spokesman Phil Keith offered this response. I'm, I'm assuming they were deserving awards. And uh, if there's a problem with the security safeguards thing, why, I know that the secretary is working on it. Dwayne Sewell was Roser's predecessor at the Energy Department. He supervised the officials now being criticized by the House Energy Committee. At the time, those people were working for me as far as I could tell, they were carrying out the orders that I gave. Before he resigned in 1981, Sewell set up independent assessment teams to search out flaws in security at nuclear weapons plants. The teams found problems at Los Alamos, then run by Herman Roser, Savannah River, then run by Robert Morgan, and other plants. Yes, uh, they found problems when they went out to the plants. I want to make it perfectly clear, though, that these plants are very well protected. Congressman Dingle and Sikorsky say that when Herman Roser replaced Sewell as Assistant Energy Secretary, Roser and Morgan killed off the independent assessment teams that had criticized them. Over the past few weeks, demonstrators in Germany and Great Britain have been protesting the deployment of Pershing II and cruise missiles in Europe. Among their fears, the possibility that a nuclear weapon could fall into terrorist hands. The House Energy Committee has that same fear about the nuclear weapons built and stockpiled across the United States. If security isn't tightened, Congressman Sikorsky offers a drastic solution. I think we should get a new energy secretary. Sheila Hirschau, CNN, on special assignment. <laughs>